All right, we are live on Facebook. Welcome to the latest episode of Bosses in Action. Very excited to be here with Justin today. Justin runs a, a great team, and it's a great opportunity for you guys to learn about inside sales. And for me, when I, I looked at what Justin wanted to talk about today, it's also about accountability. So that's one of the things I think he may not have used that term, but ultimately it's about how do we keep people accountable? How do we help them be accountable for themselves? And I'm going to quote my coach and accountability is the highest form of love. So we're going to get a lot of love today from Justin and how he does things. And I appreciate everybody being here today. Without any further ado, I'm going to pass over to you, Justin, and just kind of introduce who you are. And then we'll just kind of go into some of the great things that we're talking about, how you're using follow-up boss. Ab absolutely. Thank you guys for the invite. And I am on my cell phone audience. So if I get a call, I'll, I'll end it real quick. But if there's a pause, I apologize. Um, my name is Justin Bringus. I run the Bringus home team out here in Marietta, California. We're in Riverside County, right above San Diego. Uh, I run a small team looking to grow it bigger. And as we continue to bring in agents, inside sales agents, admin, et cetera, um, using follow-up boss and what it allows you to do and what it allows you to function as as a team leader or even as an agent uh, is remarkable. And I'm excited to talk about today. If it's not in follow-up boss, it did not happen. I love that. And so, Justin, let's start with that's the simplest thing. And honestly, if no one takes anything else away from this today, if you implied that one rule, I think that your business would expand significantly. Those of you who don't already have that rule. So tell me what that means. Like, what are you doing? How do you hold the agents accountable to that? And what does that look like on a day to day basis? Absolutely. Well, I'm a firm believer to the old cliche. If there's no notes, it did not happen. And so I've just exemplified that too. If it's not in follow-up boss, it did not happen. We encourage and hold our agents, our inside sales agents, uh, even my lenders accountable to all operating outside, or I should say inside of follow-up boss. Every call, every text message, every email, all needs to happen with inside follow-up boss because in order to have the cohesion um, required to make sure that clients have the experience that they came for, uh, it's very need to have a system like follow boss where everything can be centralized. And, and I'll take that a step farther. I'll just use an example as I get you on the phone today as a buyer. And uh, we have a nice 20, 30 minute conversation. Uh, if I'm pre-qualifying you the right way, I've asked some questions about your credit and your income and your employer and what type of loan you're pursuing, et cetera. And the neat thing about follow boss, this is just one of the many things, is I'm then able to tag my lender bring them into follow up boss as a collaborator. And rather than having myself or the client have to re-explain everything that we just spent the last 20, 30 minutes on the phone talking about, my notes are inside follow up boss. So once I transfer or add the lender as a collaborator, the lender is able to come in, see the conversation that I had with the client, and they're able to take off from there. Um, okay. I use this example. You've ever called like an 800 number and you explain a situation that you're going through only to be transferred to somebody else, to have to re-explain the situation, to be transferred again and so forth. And the neat thing about follow-up boss and utilizing it this way is we don't have to repeat ourselves. The client doesn't have to repeat ourselves. And it really gives the client that confidence that we're all on the same team, that we're all working together. And that we know what we're doing, because when you have to keep asking the same thing over and over, it can make it look like you might not know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so let me ask you the question. It's funny. Someone put it in the Q&A. I had a different version of the same question. But let's just say this. Let's say that uh, obviously you have some lenders you have some great relationships with. You've done a lot of deals with. But let's say the client comes in and says, hey, I work with Quicken Loans. This is who my person is then what happens? So if I have an, a lender that may not be my standard lender that I work with, because even though we want 100% there, it just doesn't happen, right? And, and yeah, and 100% is not going to happen. Uh, some of those bigger lenders or some of those private lenders may have some rules uh, that we have to follow in terms of them not allowing. So what I would do is, let's just say I was working with Quicken Loans, is ask permission, would I be able to create an account for you inside of Follow Boss where we can create a bring us home team at quickenloans.com, or maybe it's quickenloans at bringushometeam.com, give you an email to use during the time in the process. And would you mind CCing 
that email on all communication because then it's going to feed, uh, feed that email and that communication into follow up us. So I love that because, you know, um, again, my objection is I hear that too, is like, oh, this guy doesn't want to use him, this guy doesn't. But the reality is, is that, you know, as real estate agents, and I love where you're coming from, what I'm hearing you saying is we're in charge of this transaction. We are going to do, we're the ones who spent six hours showing this guy property. We're the ones who answered all their questions. Yeah, they went to an LO and they spent 30 minutes with them, gave them some paperwork. But at the end of the day, we are the contact point here. And I love that you're driving everybody, even some guy you never met before saying, Hey, would you do this? And I've got to believe that if you give somebody at least a, some, at least they'll do something like CC an email account, right? I think that's a, I think that's a relatively simple ask. Uh, I think it is, and it's as easy as you going into follow boss, creating just a, a quick maybe outside lender at whatever your team name is dot com, then having them like let's think about it this way: when we get into escrow, do we not ask everybody to CC anybody, everybody's my TC, my operations, my assistant, my lender, etc. Uh, why not just create another email that you can attach to your follow up boss account? So even though if quick and loans for this example is saying, hey, well, we, we're not going to create an email for you. We'll CC this email outside lender at bringushometeam.com. Now it'll attach to that file. I love it. Yeah. And again, you know, not everyone's going to play what is the perfectly within our systems, but I love that you have a contingency for that because uh, I had the thought and clearly someone else who was watching had the same thought. It's like, well, you know, what if they don't have follow-up boss or what if they're not using follow-up boss? What if they can't spell follow-up boss? Whatever the case may be. <laughs> so anyway, that's awesome. So I appreciate that. Um, what other stuff are you, obviously you guys use the standard, you know, the standard database, but what are some other things that you guys are using with follow-up boss that's helped create some of these efficiencies? that you have in your business? Well, you know, Elena Key, uh, for those of you in the follow boss world who know yep. who she is, she's a, uh, I just got off the phone with her a little while ago. She was helping me figure some things out. Um, I utilize the resources that follow a boss has put in front of us. Uh, you know, if you're not in the follow a boss community, and obviously if you're on this webinar today, you are, but you need to be spending some time inside of that community because there's a lot of good information that comes out. Now, the difference that I find between those who are really able to excel their business and the usage of follow a boss versus those who don't is we all have the ability to learn the same information. The difference is how long does it take you to implement what you've learned? Are you going to sit on the sidelines or are you going to implement this today? Absolutely. I love that. You know, I, there's so many people who are what I refer to as ready, aim, 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 fire people. And, you know, we used to get really on those people who were ready, fire, aim, but I'd rather have you be ready, fire, aim than aiming for a month and a half. And all of a sudden, you know, you could have worked out all the bugs all along the way. Take some action. I love that you said that. That's a great piece of advice for anybody who's watching. Sometimes just do it. You know, uh, I, I, this is going to family, so I won't say what I really want to say, but just do it. It's sometimes a great way to do it. I love that you're saying that. So um, also, I want to look into this. You, you have an ISA team. We mentioned that, that you mentioned that earlier. So how many people are on that ISA team? We have two ISAs right now. Two okay. ISAs. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And we, yeah. My, so my question is, so ISA converts a lead. What is your process there? How are you using follow-up boss to coordinate with the agent, with the ISA, with the client to make the whole thing? Because obviously we're looking for this feeling of complete continuity between all these entities. And it's challenging with an ISA, right? I just, to your point, I just spent 30 minutes on the phone with this guy. I don't want this guy to have to interview with the agent again. I don't want this person to feel like, holy crap, I'm going to have to talk to 27 people and tell my entire story. So what are you doing to facilitate that pass off of the lead and making sure that lead gets followed up with? Because that's another issue that comes. Sometimes an ISA has an opinion of a lead that an agent might not. So let's start with the pass off. Where are you doing? How are you doing that? Well, I'll sum it up with two words, action plans. Okay. And I'll give you an example. So I'm an agent. I have a lead come in. Uh, maybe it's during opportunity time. While the ISAs are here, all leads come to the ISAs. Okay. When the ISAs are not here and we have after hours, we have what we call opportunity time. And okay. that is the agent's opportunity to, maybe you're an agent brand new on the team and you're not going to be awarded ISA appointments. But on a Saturday when the ISAs are not here, on a Sunday when the ISAs are not here, you can come in and claim leads and be given an opportunity. So I'm an agent on the team. It's Sunday afternoon. I claim a lead and I'm not able to get a hold of the lead. Monday morning, using tags and using automations and using action plans, I come in and I tag the lead ISA Justin. 
that is going to send the lead over to the ISA pond so that both ISAs now compete for that lead. The ISAs are paid in a way where they get bonuses based upon their qualified appointments. So the more leads that they have underneath them, the more opportunities they have to hit their bonuses. So I get a lead after hours, not able to make contact. I tag it ISA Justin. That sends it to an ISA pond. By tagging it ISA Justin, the ISA knows that when they get that lead or that client back on the phone, they know who to transfer it back to. When transferring it back, they tag it ISA Transfer Justin. It now comes back to me with a note letting me know they got him on the phone. And then I have an action plan that starts that tells me the agent what I need to do in order to get that lead re-engaged. Because sometimes those handoffs are not always the answer the phone right away. Sometimes the live transfer falls off. And so we have a process. But on the backside, once the ISA transfers that lead back to the agent, we also have an action plan that starts for the ISA, giving them steps over the next several days to make sure that the agent did make contact with the lead. And so not only do I have an action plan for the agent, encouraging them and guiding them what to do to get this lead to the next step. But I also, as a parachute or as a safety plan, the ISA now has an action plan attached saying, reach out to the agent. Did they make contact yet? Reach back out to the lead and ask how the transfer went. Because usually the ISA is building the relationship, right? So I want that ISA to say, hey, we transferred you over to Justin. How did that go? Did you make contact? And what it allows us to do is hold everybody accountable and also look for red flags or coaching opportunities. If a lead comes back to you and you're not following the action plan or not making your attempts to reach out, we know before you know. And so we have processes in place to either come talk to you as an agent and coach you through it, or perhaps maybe take the lead back and give it to somebody else more worthy on the team. What, what I wanted to say is I want to talk about that automation real quick. I don't want to spend a bunch of time. This isn't a class about automations. But one of the things I want people to realize is that you can do tags. And what, what I'm hearing that you're doing is you're doing ISA and then any person's name. So it might be ISA Justin, ISA Brian, ISA Bob, ISA Sue. And when we do that, it triggers an automation inside of follow-up boss, which creates an action plan. And that action plan reassigns the lead to an ISA pond, right? So that is correct. And I want everyone to understand that that's that may sound complex if you've never done that, but it's actually extremely simple. So if you haven't done that, take that opportunity. Justin is using exactly how automations have been designed inside a follow up boss to pass stuff back and forth without having to sit down and try and figure out who to do this, who to do that. Just a tag. Tags can tr trigger automations. They can trigger action plans, and that's fabulous. The way that you're doing that, I'm sure it's become very powerful. Let me ask you this question real quick. When you say that there's there's action plans, my assumption is, and I don't want to make an assumption, that's why I want to ask you, is that basically that's not a bunch of emails going out. That's tasks for the agent or tasks for the ISA to complete, correct? That is correct. It could be emails. It could be automatic text. But when we're doing the handoff back and forth, the task that we are creating is internal. Nothing's going out to the client per se automatically. It's right. advising that agent or that ISA, these are the next steps to convert this lead into a even stronger opportunity than we've already given you. Right. And really what I hear you saying is we want agents to spend their emotional, intellectual capital on having contacts with lead, not figuring out what to say. So we're going to tell them what to do until they get live or get on the phone or get in front of them where they're, they're experts at that. So you don't have to waste a bunch of energy on what email should I send? What should I do now? What should I do now? There's a pattern and it's all built inside those action plans. And I think that's brilliant. So that's awesome. Let's talk about something else. So let's say I'm an ISA on your team and I convert a lead. How does that work? Like, how am I passing that back? And how am I making sure as the ISA that you as the agent are doing a good job to make sure that I get paid? Because I'm going to guess, I don't know your structure, but I'm going to guess that I get paid as the ISA, at least in part when that closes. So I'm very motivated for it to close. You, you are correct. And, and I hope I don't uh, say his name incorrectly here. I'm coming off a week of being sick. So my brain's not all with me, but uh, Dan Pinton, Dan Pinton, I think his name is, we have um, automations inside Follow Boss that he's created with disposition links. So if an ISA comes into um, 
an appointment, they'll fill out a disposition link, which is already inside a follow-up boss. It'll say, this is a buyer's appointment. This is a listing appointment. This is where we're meeting, et cetera. And they're able to assign that to an agent. We also, this is not the conversation piece here, but we also use a system called CSU. Mm-hmm. Um, follow-up boss right now, unfortunately, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't have the ability to mark whether or not an appointment has been qualified, but my disposition form is able to give me that question. Was this appointment qualified? And CSU right now for the time being has the ability to calculate and say, yes, this appointment was qualified or no, it was not. We pay bonuses based upon qualified appointments. There you go. Qualified appointment means that they're not already working with another agent. Both decision makers were at the appointment or all decision makers, if there's more than two, uh, and that they're looking to transact within the next 90 days. I want my agents only focusing on leads that are ready to transact within the next 90 days. Anything outside of the 90 days is an ISA responsibility to nurture those leads. Okay. So with that in mind, and this happens, and I'm, I'm not talking bad about an ISA. ISAs make mistakes. People lie. People change their mind. So let's say that I got, you know, I'm an ISA and I pass a lead over to you and say, hey, Justin, this is somebody who's who's excited. They want to talk to an agent and they want to transact in the next 90 days. You get on the phone with them and they say, you know, really, we're, we're going to wait until like next June. What, what do you do then? And how does follow-up boss help you make sure that that person doesn't get lost in the abyss? Because that happens a lot. Oh, this lead sucks. And then, then it just gets lost. A lot of teams in the country end up with that problem happening. Well, if you're looking to buy next June, you're not a, a, a sucky lead. You're actually a good lead. It just means I'm I with you. <laughs> it, means I, it means I got a deal next June. So if they're outside the 90 days, well, then that's an unqualified appointment because there's many times where a lead might tell an ISA or an agent, hey, I want to buy tomorrow. Yep. You go meet with them and they're like, you know what? I spoke to my landlord and I forgot to tell you I was in a lease and I'm in this lease till next June and they're not going to let me out. Well, in that case, we go back to the tags. We assign it back to the ISA. The ISA is responsible for continuing to nurture that lead until June. Assuming the agent is still on the uh, team next June, that lead is going to come back to the agent when that lead is ready to transact. Um, Smart list. Who's who's using smart list? It all comes back to the smart list. My agents have smart lists that they work out of. They work out of active and uh, agents are clients that they're actually working with showing homes. They work out of their hot and they work out of warm. Anybody else that's a longer nurture, I have separate smart lists for the ISAs that the agents don't have access to. So the agents have their smart list and in smart list, you can say who has access and who doesn't. Absolutely. So the agents have access to their smart list because I only want them focusing on what they should be focusing on. And the same thing with the ISAs. So the ISAs have their own smart list that they would then work through. So in that case, we would transfer it back to the ISA. It's not a qualified appointment. And that ISA would continue to nurture the lead until they're ready. Okay, cool. Have you guys, do you guys um, use three-way text at all between the client, the agent, and the ISA? Is that something that you guys have implemented as well? It, it, it is something that we use, and I'm going to be honest with you, intermittently. Um, I use it a lot with going back to the lender. It does work wonders because now you put that phone number into their text messages on their phone. And so it's more recognizable. And when the agent or whomever is texting, they can go back. Oh yeah, I was there. Here's the text thread. It, it makes sense. I know who this is. Uh, it's, it's definitely something I'll be honest. There's, there's my shortfall. You found it uh, something we need to get much better at. Okay. That, that wasn't my intent. It sounds like you, you're aware of the function. And really, I just want people to know, I think a lot of people, you get in the day-to-day, and I've suffered from this. I'm sure you do as well. You've got a system, and, and then a follow-up boss comes out with something new and cool. And we don't always know what that is. And, you know, that group texting, I, I won't say it's old, but it's, you know, it's technologically old because it's six months old. That's That's old in the tech world. But it's still a really useful thing. And if you're using ISAs and you're passing leads, it's a great way to start a conversation out. So um, I'll ask you a couple more questions. So I'm going to guess that sometimes your agents actually do use their cell phones, maybe on purpose, maybe on accident. Let's let's just face that reality. So a couple of things. Are you making sure that they, that agents are sending over their V card to that client that has their follow-up boss number or their cell phone number and any other number? So that way, if I call you from my cell phone, it doesn't say an unknown number. It says Brian Curtis instead of, you know, that. Is that something that you've been teaching your people as well? Uh, absolutely. We are, are, are using that and uh, it, it works wonders. 
Uh, but the idea is you have a follow-up boss app, use it. Absolutely. If there's no notes and follow-up boss, it did not happen. So you have an app. It's very easy to open up that app and communicate via text, email, or even calling. And it'll record everything and follow boss the way that it's supposed to. Uh, but even sometimes you have some personal friends or somebody who gets your cell phone number and they're going to yeah. call through it. <laughs> and so, you know, I've got a good operations team that, you know, on a daily basis, we're looking through follow boss and we're looking through um, leads that we have made communication with. And we don't see notes when we expect that we should have seen notes. We're asking the agent to please input notes. And, you know, if, if you continue to fall on that list for a lack of better words, then those ISA opportunities and other opportunities may or may not come to you because you're not following the protocol and the system that we've created to make sure that we're all on the same page and make sure those things happen the right way. And, and I love it. That's kind of a, a pseudo, what I would call natural consequences. Like to me, to punish that person over here makes no sense. But you say, look, if you're not going to update the database, if you're not going to use the system where we can, then we can't pass you these qualified leads. Oh, well, maybe then I'll learn how to, because you hear this all the time. Well, I didn't have time to do it. Um, I was too busy. I made a mistake. And those are okay as one-offs, but they're obviously, when you're trying to build a big team, you said you have a smaller team, but you're trying to build a bigger team. I, I promise that I love where you're going with this. You're saying I've got a small team, but I know if I want to have a big team that I have to build out systems that don't work for my current size, they have to work for the size that I'm building too. And I think that's an amazing, amazing place to start. So we've got about five minutes left. And instead of me just asking you random questions, what are other things specifically in follow-up boss that you found really helpful and maybe some changes and stuff that your team really implements and, and loves to use? Well, you know, I, I'm just going to say this because we didn't really get to talk on it, but my preferred lenders have follow boss accounts. My okay. transaction coordinator has a follow boss account. Excellent. My assistant and my integrator have a follow boss account. Um, it's very, very simple. I think a lot of folks may come in and just build it out for their agents, but I have everybody with inside my operation have accounts so that there's no reason why none of us or all of us are not communicating and following up and doing the right things throughout follow up boss. Um, I would just say also utilize the follow boss trainings, utilize the follow up boss uh, Facebook account. A lot of the things that I've figured out, I didn't figure out on my own. I figured out from other people. And yeah, rip off and deploy, you know, right? <laughs> I was going to say rip off and repeat, but sure. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, there is no there is no plagiarism in real estate, so. Absolutely not. So no, I love it. And that's why we do these, you know, so I'm sorry, go ahead. I cut you off. No, I was going to say, when you see somebody doing something great, copy it. Um, I think a lot of times too, agents are afraid to reach out to people. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, I, I've, I've realized that really big, heavy top producers, and I've got some men and women in my back pocket that are closing a thousand plus deals a year. They'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people are afraid to take that step to say, Hey, I see where you're at in your business. I'd love to be there. Would you mind giving me a few minutes to tell me how to get there? And I've not had really anybody say no to me, but it's just fighting through that fear of not being afraid to ask. Yeah. Well, and I don't want to remember, you know, I'm not a thousand producer, but you know, our team will do about 500 this year. My point is this, when I'm bringing that, that's, that wasn't a brag. Actually, I'm not bragging. He's talking to people doing a thousand, but all along the ways, the guy who's doing 500, a thousand, 2000, 3000 deals a year. At one point in time, they were doing 20, 30, 50, a hundred. So, you know, I think I personally believe, you know, I heard this one time that whoever you are, when you don't have money, you just become more of that when you get money. So if you're a jerk, when you don't have money, <laughs> you're just going to be an amplified jerk when you do have money. But if you're a good person who wants to give back, who believes in that, I guarantee you, and I've had the exact same experience. You know, I'm sure there's somebody who I could point out, but I don't even remember them. That's how insignificant that is. Reach out to people. And, and I can't say this enough. Those of you who are watching, go to the group. I mean, put stuff in there. There's a ton of really, really super smart people who will come and answer your questions and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, or I've, I've done this, and I'm sure you probably have too. Hey, DM me. We'll do a quick Zoom together. I'll show you what I'm doing. You know, when we share, we all get better. And, you know, follow-up group boss is a group of abundant people, and that's one of the reasons that I love to be part of it. So um, also, those of you watching, if you have any questions, we got just a couple minutes left. 
feel free to throw those in the Q&A or the chat. And, uh, you know, what other kind of things are you guys seeing? Are you integrating? I heard you integrating C. So are you using any of the other integrations that integrate with Follow Up Boss? Uh, we're using YLOPO. I'm a big okay. uh, believer in YLOPO and what they do, especially the retargeting. Uh, we have 64,000 plus people in our database right now. Nice. Uh, with the help of YLOPO, we're retargeting almost 31,000 people um, for about a dollar a lead, if I'm not mistaken, $100 per thousand, right? Um, I can generate, and we treat a revisit, a Y priority as a new lead. And so I farm just over 21,000 homes right now. We've got about 26,000. I'm, I'm a little short of where I want to be, but we got 26,000 of my farm. So I'm about five grand short in follow up boss right now. And we're retargeting them. So if they're not responding to my postcards and they're not responding to my, my attempts to reach uh, out to them as a seller opportunity, why Lopo in conjunction with follow up boss is doing a tremendous job of retargeting them. And now they're coming back to my website as a buyer and where maybe they knew my postcard, maybe they didn't. Now they know my website and now that call is so much easier. It's so much warmer. Um, and so it goes really good. I see somebody, how do I track qualified appointments? Uh, Sisu, S-I-S-U. Uh, we use a disposition form uh, it, that's built up inside a follow-up boss that my ISA or my agent can click on. It goes through a question uh, of you know, the appointment it being set. Now, after the appointment is set, the agent gets a text message that they can either do on their phone or they can come back to follow a boss and they uh, uh, click on a disposition of saying, hey, I met with the appointment. It was qualified. And if it was qualified, follow up boss talking to CSU inside of my CSU dashboard, I can click on the ISA, see how many appointments they've set, and it'll tell me if it was a qualified appointment. And that's how I can pay off the bonuses. Now, let's just say, per, for instance, Agent A this month has 10 qualified appointments and none of them turned into an opportunity or into a deal. I don't necessarily go back to the ISA. I go back to the agent because the agent is the one who qualified them. And so now I go back to the agent and say, hey, you qualified these appointments. Help me understand how they've not turned into a transaction. I love it. And, it. and it's all about accountability. You know, we started there and that's kind of where I, we know it's it's, uh, it's the bottom of the hour. So we have to end, you know, 30 minutes goes really, really, really quick when you start talking about this. So Justin, let me start with saying thank you for being here. You know, some great ideas here. The idea of using tags to pass leads back and forth is so much simpler than trying to figure out who gets this and this and this. That tag is quick, simple and easy with those automations. And, you know, making and the thing that I love the most is that you're going to find a way either you be be accountable to our systems, or we're just not going to give you leads. It's up to you. And I love that natural consequences, understanding, and I'm sure you guys do that when you onboard people like, look, we do this. So um, it, I think it's great. And I think it's a, a perfect way to, to run a system. Um, I want to say this, if you guys have leads from Marietta, California, you said that, that's your, that's your market. <laughs> You're right. right. You're you know, right. Send them over to Justin. It sounds like he's got a heck of a program at a minimum. I guarantee you they won't get left behind in between agents, ISAs, and the accountability system that they have. So with that in mind, any final thoughts before we let you go? You know, I just want to say if there's anybody out there that's struggling or, or maybe killing it, uh, I'd love to get on the phone with you if you need some help. I'm more than happy to share anything that I've done. I'm very, very transparent. I don't hold anything to my chest. I'll give you anything and everything that, I ha that I've done. I'll introduce you. It's not just me, Elena Key. Again, shout out to you. Uh, it's people like that that have made me better. And so if anybody out there is not utilizing or is utilizing Follow Boss the way they want to or don't, reach out to me. Uh, I, I will not shun you. I will give you all the information that you want. Uh, and I'm here to help as many people as I can. Awesome, Justin. Well, we appreciate you being here today. Reach out to Justin. Uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. I can definitely be reached through Facebook Messenger, probably the easiest way instead of trying to get you to remember my email and my phone number. Facebook Messenger works really well. Um, is that the best way to get a hold of you, Justin, as well? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm going to probably kill myself for doing this. But if you want Do to, it. shoot me a text. It's 951-595-5998. And I'll try to respond to you as quickly as possible. Awesome. Well, and Justin just, uh, he's going to be real busy for the next couple of weeks because he just gave out <laughs> his personal cell phone here on this webinar and this is recorded. So it goes on forever and ever, but anyway, you know, without... I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I believe in follow up boss and awesome. the community has given me so much. It's my time to give back. 
I appreciate that. Uh, it really speaks to who you are. You know, I'm a firm believer that whatever we give comes back to us tenfold anyway. So expect some abundance coming your way. Thank you, Follow Up Boss community for watching and, you know, be part of the group. Please interact in there. Ask questions because great users like Justin will go in there and answer your question. They'll give you ideas to things you didn't even know you wanted. So, you know, the more we interact with each other, the more successful we all become. Thanks for watching today and check in, uh, check us out for the next Follow Up Bosses in action. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.